uh, if you're hearing voices, it's, I thought I had some Sid music in the background, it seems we're getting there. Anyway, I think the music will start soon. So, I have been continuing to format some discs. Also, I just could not wait. That might be... Just a little loud. Just a moment here. So, as I was saying, I had gone out to the garage, and I was quite excited, because out there was a box that says Commodore 128, and it's right here. Ooh. And there's something in it, but you know what? I have no idea what's in it. But let me tell you, many years ago, I had found some things online, and I had arranged on this one day that I would head out in my great big station wagon and collect things. And I headed west and then north and then farther east. So basically the three things I was interested in was old Commodore stuff, old magazines that happened to be produced by Hugh Hefner, and cornflower glass. So, the first stop was just a couple of quick things. I think a disk drive and other stuff. That was fine. Um, then I went for the magazines. Oh, my Lord. The car was sitting pretty low. Although I did put... This, the thing about those old station wagons is they did have a bit of an overhang over the back wheel. So I made sure that magazines were to the front. But, boy, there was a lot of them. And then I got to the Commodore place and realized that it was going to take a miracle for me to be able to get stuff in. And this 128 was part of that. And I think there were other 128s as well. I think they're still in the garage, I think. But I have never... <coughs> I've never even looked inside the box. Did this one format? It did not. Boy, that is strange. This disc is the one that I accidentally formatted, that I didn't mean to format, but I did. Anyway, so I got this, the guy came out, I had, there were monitors, there was all kinds of stuff. I don't remember how many 128s there were. But I never, I just put them in, uh, you know, after I rearranged the car yet again, I put them in, I have never looked in. That was maybe five years ago. So, what is in the box? And does the serial number match? I don't know. Well, so far, it looks pretty good in that. I do think they're sliding. Don't be sliding. I see a power supply for a Commodore 128. MCUG. I suppose that's a Commodore user group. This disk has failed again. Tragic. We'll try another of these blank ones and see if it will format. So here is the power supply. You know what? It still feels a little on the cold side, so I don't think I'm ready plug it in yet. And 
here. Oh, here with styrofoam is indeed Commodore 128. The box. Now look. Here's an, here's the quick guide to how to hook it all up. The box is not in perfect shape by any means. It's probably been touted around from, oh yeah, this, I can't plug this in yet. If you look, I don't know if you can see yet, but you know, this was out in the cold. It's, it's kind of sweating on the bottom. So it is not up to a room temperature yet. No, it is not. So I cannot plug it in yet. It is, whoo, 1,999,368. And, let's see, is the box the same? Yeah, it is. Okay, so here we have another matching box, although not the greatest box. But, you know, you know, you know. Oh, so that is for a minute. Let's try another. So this, as I said, it's sweaty. Oh, and it's got the torque screws in it. I think. For a while, yeah it does. Torque screws are kind of like what car companies use on licensed, not license plates, um, headlights. And, I hear voices. It's my voice. Anyway, this needs to sit. So, uh, I'm going to pull out this SX-64 and I'm going to tuck it down there. And maybe tomorrow, I'll be brave. I certainly don't want to ruin it. After all these years. Anyway, the guy told me it was 128. And I trusted that it was. So, life is good. Oops. So, I am going to let this all heat up. I'm going to put this box... I'm kind of thinking the train is getting tired of having boxes on it. So I'm going to put this one on the pile of stuff. I have the power supply down here. It is, um, it also should warm up. It should. And what do we got? Do we have another successful disk formatting? We do. I am in formatting discs. Using a 1581. Oh, I did. I did take some recycling out. Um, but it is not time to actually put it out. And also, recycling and green bin things sometimes have the undesired effect of um, drawing hungry animals. Because there could be something good smelling in there. Especially in the green bean stuff. So, um, I need to put that stuff in the garage. I do. Um, we do indeed. And of course, when I open up the garage, I'm going to find that there are some Amigas sitting there that I haven't brought in yet. And I'm not sure if I'm ready to bring them in yet. It's getting kind of full here again. But at least I know they're there. 
I do. I'm more inclined, in some ways, to try and find my way in from the other direction and get at the drawers that have the, uh, what might be big 20s. Might be. Might be. So, oh, this seems to have formatted. It's really nice being able to just scroll up the screen. I mean, I wish the Commodore 64 had basic 4 or 7, so I could just do a directory. Otherwise, I might not have formatted the disk I didn't want to format, which now won't format. I'm trying it again, by the way. So I'm naming these disks day 1, day 2, day 3. Now I'm up to day 6. And this one might end up being day 7, but it probably won't format. Probably won't. And if it won't, oh well. These things happen. They do. So there, um, this 128 looks pretty good. But we'll see. It's been sitting out there for a while. So as I say, it'll probably be tomorrow until I'm ready. Oh, no. This just does not want to format. Well, I'm going to try one of these Memorex. Oh, formatted two sides. I think when it says it's kind of pre-formatted, that means IBM evil. And I think that means it's not going to work. But, who knows? We'll see. There were soft sectors and hard sectored and single density, dual density, quad density. Who knows? Anyway, 1581 is working. The 1541 that came out of the mangled box with the yellow keys, that's working. This 1541... The 1541 is still here on its side. It does not need to be. The 1581 power supply is slightly warm, as it should be, because it's on. This 1541 can return to the pile. Of how many 1541s? I don't know. I still don't know for sure, because of course there are always more. So, we are formatting. This is actually a big test here, because there are a bunch of them here. Oh, well, there's just two. I thought there was more. I thought there was a bunch of these 2S2D, but it does not seem that way. It seems that there are just two of them, and this one did format. So, so here's the here's Memorex formatted. Two S two D. So that means double sector, double density, two sided double density. So we'll call this day eight, and away we go. So the next thing that's uh, trying to attain room temperature is the Big Twenty and its many, its little case that almost it was kind of like what maybe they had in schools. But I like to plug cartridges in, and I have a bunch of them. And I remember um, this was my Omega Race machine. It was fabulous. Um, but being in the garage, it will need a little cleaning. And hopefully nothing bad has happened to it. 
hopefully. I'm just gazing down. I would, I'd love to go over here and grab maybe a 128D. Um, but you see, there's piles and piles of machines here. And I can't get through. So, we are formatting. We're waiting for things to climatize. And uh, <coughs> the SID chip plays on. Bye for now.